we want to let you know something breaking because if you're just joining us, some news out of Florida moments ago in the Parkland shooter trial as the judge has denied defense motion for her to disqualify herself. That happened in writing, like I said, just moments ago. We're going to get to that in a moment as recess from that is going to return at 3 p.m. Eastern time. This is certainly an interesting new development here. Marie, I want to get your immediate thoughts on this. What's your reaction? I'm not surprised that she said no. Basically, they filed a motion asking her to decide whether or not she is unfair to them and that that contentious relationship that they have would impact her ability to give them a fair trial. So they're asking her to put herself on the fire. So if she granted that motion, it would be like admitting, yeah, I, I really embarrassed you in front of your client. I acted unprofessional to an extent that your trial cannot be fair and impartial, so I'm removing myself from this situation. I'm not surprised that she said no, because it would be like throwing herself under the bus. Well, Michael, were you surprised by this? Uh, no, I'm not surprised by it. The trial is mostly elapsed. The defense has rested. And so for that reason, it doesn't surprise me at all. The judge was very shrewd. She didn't deny it on the record. She didn't argue on the record. Instead, she went back into chambers during this break and she entered a written order is what I understand. I don't see it on the docket. But nonetheless, I think the judge pretty much realizes is that if what she did was reversible error, she's going to get reversed. If she had recused right now, then there would have been a question about whether they had to do a mistrial anyway. She may as well take the verdict from the jury whenever they wrap up, whenever the prosecution finishes their rebuttal, and then the appeals court can evaluate it however they need to. It's very rare, and I've never seen anybody recuse in the middle of a trial, particularly a jury trial, for that very reason. And I'm not sure that would even be allowed. In other words, I think you would have to do the whole trial de novo anyway, which is the worst thing that's going to happen if the sentencing ends up being reversed because of this or because of the motions in limine or something else. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I think doing a DQ in the middle of trial, uh, two trials ago back in July, I thought about doing that. I didn't do that, uh, but I won the appeal. And I think, um, I think now, unfortunately, the way the prosecutor and to some extent the judge have conducted this, I think they've, they've at least given uh, Nicholas Cruz, who shouldn't have any issues for appeal because he's obviously guilty and he's obviously done something despicable. They've given him um, an issue that on appeal that's worth listening to. And as I said before, that's a huge blunder, but it, we won't resolve that today. Well, Marie, how will this now impact, if at all, the rest of this trial, especially with the tension that we talked about between the defense and the judge? I think the trial is going to continue. I think the judge is going to be more on her P's and Q's. I think she's going to adhere more to court decorum because they're calling her out on it. It's public, and she knows that this is going to be a ground for appeal. So I think that she's going to be less hair flipping, less eye rolling and neck rolling, and be a little more professional about it so that they don't call her out for favoritism in terms of liking the prosecution and ruling in their favor more than the defense and embarrassing the defense in front of her client. She's going to be on her P's and Q's because it's noted that she's really in favor of prosecution. Well, Michael, do you now think that the defense kind of checked the judge, like checked herself and said, all right, now you need to settle down. You can't treat us a certain way. Let's go back and try to have some normalcy here. Because in a way, it was getting out of hand. It was getting out of hand, and it's better today than it was on last week. I think it was on Wednesday that they broke. I don't think it's perfect, but I think the, the situation is what it is. What's truly critical is not what happens at a sidebar or not what happens when the jury is excused. What's truly critical is if there's something that happens that the jury sees. The jury is the fact finder of first resort in this case, subject to review by the trial court judge. And obviously the defense is not going to get any help from the trial court judge in this particular case. But the jury is the fact finder. These are non-lawyers and they're seen right, wrong or indifferent as being more impressionable than lawyers or judges. And for that reason, it's really what happens in front of the jury that matters. And I hope the jury has been instructed not to 
watch programs like this until they're done. Because if they see that, in fact, the defense attorney is getting castigated by the judge in open court outside the hearing of the jury, of course, then that, that, that's a mistrial. And quickly, Marie, what can we expect at 3 p.m. when recess is, they're finished? Everybody's going to be on their best behavior. The judge is not going to be trying to catch smoke. Defense is not going to be trying to catch smoke. And everyone is going to treat that court like it is a place where that defendant deserves a fair trial, no emotions involved. Calm down, everyone. So at least they get that out of the way, and we're going to hopefully get back to normal.